Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The Deputy President, Dr. William Samuel Araproto, today chaired the IBEC meeting at his residence in Karen. But that meeting was boycotted by key allies of President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. Almost all cabinet secretaries who are allied to the president boycotted that event. Almost senior government officials who are allied to the president boycotted that event. And because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, I want us to look at the possible reasons why the cabinet secretaries boycotted this particular event. In my view, this event is significant politically speaking. Because remember the last time the deputy, the deputy president tried attacking, um, attacking devolution, why the government could not allocate more money, Kenyans reminded the deputy president that he was actually the chair of the IBEC committee. And I remember there was this gentleman who tried to defend the DP that the DP has not actually the, 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 the former Nairobi deputy governor, Jonathan Mweke, tried defending uh, the deputy president that, you know, the deputy president has never chaired that committee since the second term of uh, their rule that when he was in the, when he was a cabinet, I mean, when he was the deputy governor of Nairobi, the deputy president used to chair that meeting and because of that, that's why Kenya failed. Kenya failed. So the issue of William Ruto chairing IBEC has always featured. When the deputy president was working, he used to chair an organization called IBEC, Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, which was him as the chair and the 47 governors. I can confirm here, because I attended some of those meetings when Governor Kidero was not around, that the counties got their money on time 95% of the time in the five years I was in office. After the handshake, that committee has never met. That committee has met close to whatever. It, it has met because it's the one that determines the revenue share no, no, and the no. budget. It, it isn't. The last it, this, it, it isn't. The last meeting that was held agreed on how much money was going to the counties in this budget. That's not the committee that, 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 that checks uh... it was chaired by the deputy president. Ibec. Yes. So IBEC, he has chaired IBEC this year. And he chaired IBEC last year. I bet Unless you say that he was sitting in that committee, but... Uh, Somebody I, else was chairing. Yes. I, <laughs> I think also when it comes to honesty, stand by what you have done and stand by what you've said. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. And that's why I'm saying, even when it comes to the deputy president saying, okay, so I was doing very active in the last uh, term, but I'm not very active in this term. This is a story written on the standard by Rosalind Obala this year, uh, 11th of February. And it was after the meeting of IBEC. Like if you governor, the photo here, of uh, like if Governor Derito Moreithi, the Deputy President and Treasury CEO Sukuri Atani at the 14th Ordinary Session of IBEC, where they agreed to increase this year's uh, allocation. allocation to the counties to 409 billion shillings. See? They beat. See? He chairs. Okay, I stand, I stand, no, no, no. I, I stand corrected. Uh, so why are we having all these issues if all those things have been agreed? You should tell us. And, 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 the question and, and, is that and, and, and are why, there the issues? And, 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 why, and why haven't the counties gotten 409 and they only got 320? If they agreed. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. And again, you also remember that the Deputy President attended the last cabinet meeting, which was hosted by President Ruth Kenyatta. So this particular meeting was intended to achieve certain objectives. But why do you think this gentleman boycotted the event? Let me just go to, through William Ruto's tweet. He posted something just from my laptop, sorry. The deputy president is saying, so he's saying, chair the 17th ordinary session of the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, IBEC Karen, on source revenue is a sleeping giant that can unlock the economic potential of the country. So the first thing which we must actually figure out is what is IBEC and what is the role of IBEC. According to the Kenyan constitution, according to the Kenyan constitution, the international, the intergovernmental budget and economic council IBEC is established under section 187 of the Public Finance Management Act. The council consists of the deputy president, 
who should be the chairperson the cabinet secretary responsible for matters relating to finance that's the ministry for treasury a representative of parliamentary service commission a representative of the judiciary the chairperson of the commission on revenue allocation or person designated by the chairperson the chairperson of the council of governors the cabinet secretary responsible for intergovernmental relations these guys boycotted this event let me just try to figure out let me just get you the details which uh, are available on uh, the people daily captured this so well they are saying that because i want us to look at why these guys boycotted but we need to understand the the, the whole background so the people daily is saying cabinet secretaries and governors have on tuesday given a key forum chaired by william ruto a wide bath in what is con is a continuation of the bitter fallout between president Rukinyat and his deputy only to Rukana governor nanok who doubles as the chair of william ruto's presidential campaigns attended the ibec chaired by the dp at his current so it's only nanok who attended this meeting as the governor others were ps devolution julius korir control of budget margaret nyakango representative from the national treasury Ministry of Devolution and County Executive Committee members. So it says, it goes further to say, to say Council of Governors Chair and Embo Governor Martin Ombora, a constituent member of IBEC, led a host of governors in skipping the event. Wambora is actually allied to the DP, but I think since he, he didn't get the, the Embu senatorial ticket, I, I don't think <laughs> he's still in Kenya Kwanzaa. Others who skipped the event include the Commission of Revenue, Allocation Jen Kirigai, Auditor General Nancy Gatungu, and Judiciary Chief Registrar Anna Madi. Ruto had invited Ukuri Yatani, James Masharia, George Magoha, Peter Munya, and Eugene Omalwa, but they did not attend. So the question then is, why do you think this gentleman decided to boycott this event because previously they used to attend this event in my view this gentleman they decided to boycott this event because of the following reasons and by the way before we do that in case you are watching the channel for the first time please take a second or two click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and to the subscribers i want to continue thank you guys for your continued support why do you think they boycotted this event because we can only talk of boycott in this country, we've witnessed William Ruto boycotting President Ruto Kenyatta's events. There are several occasions we've seen the deputy president seat remaining vacant during the entire meeting chaired by the president. We've also seen President Ruto Kenyatta avoiding shaking hands with his deputy on several occasions. And we've also seen President Ruto Kenyatta sometimes walking out when allies of the deputy president are speaking so why do you think these guys avoided this meeting because the truth of the matter is that they boycotted the event number one i think the boycott is basically a continuation of the fallout between these two gentlemen the truth of the matter is that even if you are the minister and you want to serve ruto and you want to serve Uhuru, you can't because these guys have fallen out so that sometimes the best thing for you to do is just to to, to 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 boycott events give you make you keep yourself busy find something else to do so the truth of the matter is that uhuru kenyatta and william ruto fell out and that fallout is bitter it reached a point where these guys could not even greet each other so if the two principals cannot greet each other and william ruto is chairing ibec the next day he will go outside there and blame uhuru kenyatta for certain things which as the chair of ibec he could have done so i think the fallout is bitter and therefore this other gentlemen are confused. They don't know where to begin from, where to head to. Number two, William Ruto, on several occasions, boycotted President Ruto Kenyatta's events. That's a fact. And you know, President Ruto Kenyatta is the head of state. All these other cabinet secretaries, these cabinet ministers, I mean, the, 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 the permanent secretaries, those senior government officials, they serve at the mercy of the president so if ruto boycotted william i mean boycotted president Ruto Kenyatta's events severely i'm sure that either 
directly or indirectly, there is an order not to attend this meeting. Of course, for example, if the president is not willing to meet with his deputy, what business do you have? So, so probably I think the, the day the deputy president started boycotting uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's event, this guy is also said, okay, if he's boycotting president, the president's event, why should we attend his events? And of course, attending the events will have implications. And number three, I also think that it could be that these guys were avoiding a situation where William Ruto was going to strategically use the IBEC for his political reasons. You know, William Ruto is a shrewd politician and he's, he, he has proved over the years that he can turn good events like this into his political gain. So I think Peter Munya, Wamalwa, I mean, let's just visualize a picture where the deputy president, as the deputy president is standing up there, flanked by the cabinet secretary for finance, cabinet secretary for devolution, then you have cabinet secretary for agriculture, then you have the chair of the council of governor this side, and these other senior government officials. Dennis Itumbi would be rushing all over with that photo. That red is being played. That Ruto is the boss. So I tend to think that this gentleman just decided that the best thing for us to do is to boycott this event. Because the last times we attended such kind of events, they've always been used politically. And because of the fallout between these two gentlemen, we should not be caught up in the middle of their political was and number four this gentleman also fear being victimized that's the honest truth you know we are in a country where the deputy president and the deputy and the president are not seeing eye to eye when you relate to the president you are viewed as an enemy when you relate i mean you are viewed by as the enemy by Ruto. if you relate with the deputy president the other side also views you like that so because most of these guys are serving at the mercy of the president what they don't want is to be victimized so to avoid any victimization, what these guys have done, in my view, is that simply boycott. So you'd rather answer questions why you never attended the event, rather than answering questions why you attended the event. And lastly, I think it's all about 2022. Cabinet secretaries have already decided, people like Peter Munya, they've already decided that for us, Ruto is a no. <laughs> Yeah, so they don't want anything to do with him. And because of that, they might have said one, two things, three things which are hurting both sides. So like if, for example, the yesterday over the weekend you were in rallies and you attacked the deputy president and is chairing a meeting and you are there, what can you discuss? Then the next day, the same videos will be circulated, the, the photos will be circulated. I think because of politics now, these guys have decided that Liwe Liwalo, now it's all the time. If you were to meet, those times have now left. I don't think there's even going to be another IBEC meeting before the next general election. I don't know what you think, but for me, that is my take. Thank you guys and please, may you have a good day. Bye-bye.